Like many of you, I am proud of my base. But just look at it from another point of view. Many features are despicable to say the least and sometimes even horrifying. I know it's just a video game, but let's take up the challenge, shall we? I chose this nice valley behind my dome to build a new, sustainable mega base without killing animals, but with food, resources and useful farms. Don't worry, buddy, you'll be safe. Hmm, I like this valley, but for sure it requires some terraforming. This is gonna be a big project, with automatic farms, awesome buildings and tons of features and details. Keep watching! It took me 30 Minecraft days to gather and craft the resources for all the buildings, the fields, the farms and the decorations, including a trip to the Guardian farm, then the nether to get quads. And finally, a quick visit to the swamp village of a couple of episodes ago for the blue orchids, my favorite flowers. While terraforming, I had to remove all the trees, but this is a sustainable project, so I will plant some new custom ones and I'm harvesting the leaves for later. I remove one layer at a time, filling three shulker boxes of dirt and grass blocks, but I recycled all of them to level the surface. It's a farmland, it's supposed to be all flat and nice. I had to wait for the rain to stop for my presentation, but now we're ready to build. I'm gonna turn this natural stream into a river that will power a water wheel. We are in a flower forest, so I'm gonna build some flower farms. The square here is for the orange tulip. I already tested the area and it should be mostly okay. This is an azure red spot good for decorations and for light grey dye. And right next door there's a white tulip area, so I'm gonna build a third flower farm here. This is gonna be a lake. Now follow me. The holes are for a magnetic railway. All sort of power, don't worry. This huge flat area is for the farm with crops and flowers. There's more going on here, but let me show you just this place. This is the main building a large storage where all the outputs from the farm will be sorted and maybe a farmer trading hall to get golden carrots. Sir, I told you, the rules of separate waste collection must be respected. Let's talk about style now. I want a realistic take on the solar punk theme inspired by actual buildings and solutions all around the world. Let's start with the orange tulip farm. The redstone is from the Schulker Craft Flower Farm and I went a bit fancy with the decorations. I don't remember in which city I saw a similar building with irregular windows of different colors and sides, but I had been planning to build it for a while. It's very different from any Minecraft style I saw before. There it is, I can't believe how all different wood colors matched so well, working with so many different blocks was a nightmare. I'm waiting for bundles, but I'm not sure they will help. We'll see. I'm so proud of the first farm. It looks covered in moss and greenery, yet so modern and colorful. The back side is in a different style, with asymmetrical balconies in different wood blocks. There are more windows on this side, but they will be partially covered by the farm I will build here. Let's go downstairs. Some more meal in this dispenser, then I can turn on the farm like this. Yeah, this farm are noisy. And when I'm done, I can put everything in this bin. It will be dropped in the underground system of pipes that goes... Well, no for now, but I'm working on that. Anyway, this awesome building is not just an orange tulip farm. Follow me on the first floor. Right above me, there's a small cactus farm. You know how it works. When they grow, they're destroyed by fences. Oops, perfect timing. Just wait for a few seconds, and the hopper minecart is throwing it into the system. I know what you're wondering. Why are cacti so high up? Well, this is for a feature that I will show you later. Since everything will be redirected in the storage, let's focus on the main building. 
It's the administrative department of the Solar Corps. So it's all fancy and clean with glass walls on all sides, smooth curves and balconies, filled with greenery. I dig it a large basement with a storage for all the farms and full interiors. All the outputs will be sorted in the right place. Let's finish this building now, shall we? Each floor of the Solar Corp building is smaller than the one below and all of them have a terrace with small trees and flowers. On the first floor I'm gonna display more or less all the Minecraft flora while the second floor is just a tiny room with more decorative planters. Then I added a custom oak right in front of the main building and I was ready to plan the next structure. I switched to a vegetarian dye to be consistent with the vibe, but anyway. We will need crops and food in the farm, and so we are about to build a double farm for melons and pumpkins right here, beside the orange tulip farm. I'm sowing seeds in a checkers pattern, a layer of pistons with destroyed items so the upper minecart below can harvest them. I was thinking about two twin farms with similar designs and a different palette, but I changed my mind and the buildings are gonna be different. All will be also wrapped by the red nether brick slab walkway that starts around the orange tulip farm. This is the back side of the two farms. The pumpkin one has this weird design of leaves and white terracotta, while the melon farm has colored walls in concrete powder and glass. I really like how the signs have a random pattern that match the colors of the walls. Let's add on the walkway that put the three buildings together. The rooftop looks messy, as if it's being used. There's a solar collector, some greenery, and that air conditioner looks so good. On this side, there's another solar collector and a sitting area. Hmm, let's give a look. There's still something missing. Daylight detectors are cheap and totally worth it. They look like solar panels with all the cells and are perfect for the solar pump part. Okay. Now I need something to fill this empty space. I'm adding the last touch with this overhang. It's supposed to be the place where the watermelons are stored and maybe sold from producer to consumer. Follow me under the melon farm where a crafter compacts the watermelons before dropping them into the water ground system. I have so much fun with this new style and I honestly wanted to build another farm but I decided to wrap up this side of the farmland, landscaping the river with the mud and sandy bed and a retaining wall of mossy blocks. This farmland needs energy so I'm gonna scatter small power plants where they can be needed like this hydroelectric water wheel connected to a control unit. I think the control unit needs one more tiny detail. Let's quickly set up a loom. I'm gonna use a snort pattern. You can find it in the bastions and it's awesome to create banners. The bottle should be white, like this. Now, if I put it here, it looks like buttons. Now, just for my mental sanity, what if I quickly replace these birch logs with mangrove? Oh, isn't that better? I got back to my dome and a friend joined me on the way back here. Welcome to the Solar Corp farmland. This is your new home buddy. Follow me. I built the perfect house for a cute savannah armadillo like you. Here you are. It feels like home, doesn't it? This is the cactus farm we built before, the same upper minecart that harvests cacti will catch armadillo scutes too, so we can have both at minimal impact. Let's move on to the north side. This minecart runs under what could be a bamboo farm, but honestly I got plenty, so we'll do an adaptive reuse and build a twisted vines farm instead. Sadly, the replay mod file of this farm turned out to be somehow damaged and I can show you the process, but it's a classic piston farm with few observers and a redstone path that goes down to the pistons. 
the twisted vine farm is surrounded by glass, so everything is nice and visible. The interior walls are made of plank of different colors with a V-shaped pink pattern. The front wall is too flat, but I know exactly how to decorate it. I got inspired by an iconic real solar punk building, the 25 Verde in Turin, Italy, an amazing apartment complex with a messy green facade made of wooden balconies, glass and potted trees. In my farm, the birch doors are just decorative but add an extra layer of credibility to the balconies. I added a Minecraft touch by using decorated pots, moss and a solid combination of spruce and mud bricks. And even the roof is in the same messy style. The next in line is the Azure Bluet Farm. I love these flowers and I already have a farm for them somewhere else but I rather move it here along with the others. This farm is inspired by another real solar punk building, the University of Warsaw Library, with its walls covered in vines and a glass roof and the weird purple steel structure that I realized with purple blocks. There's a white tulip area right beside the Azure Bluet farm, so I'm gonna build another flower farm. All three farms are identical, but you can never tell, because am I sure, they look totally different. This one has a nice little twist on the first floor. It hosts a fancy nightclub where you can have a drink or a romantic dinner by candlelight surrounded by greenery and flowers. Look at this texture, the glow lichen is just perfect to smooth the transition. And the inside, it looks as if a glass house married a church. Let's grow some flowers now. Let's gather everything. I'm gonna throw the output in the system so the seeds will be turned into bone meal and the flowers are stored in the right barrel in the main building over there. I probably over decorated this porch but at least now I can't be wrong about which flower is grown here. And I turned the purple structure into a bamboo planter. Let me show you the upper floor of the white tulip farm. This is a, mm, a juice factory I guess only fruit cocktails are served here. Look at this place. It's so cozy. It looks like the perfect place to spend the night. There's a balcony here with a little tree. Yeah, I know we have dangerous neighbors. The next structure is a classical plexiglass greenhouse that you can find in modern farmlands. The iron tractors and doors are not supposed to be closed. I didn't put any lever or buttons, but it's okay. That exchange is important. On the roof, I put a dozen of daylight detectors because they really look like solar panels and a little overgrown. All these iron tractors and detectors weren't cheap, but it was totally worth it. The greenhouse is supposed to be fully automated with mini robots powered by solar energy from the roof. Space is limited, but I have created some unique and different designs for the robot gardens. This greenhouse is not a farm, but it has a purpose too. See, I have plenty of ancient seeds for my sniffer farm, but I needed a nice place where to grow them. And what better place than a greenhouse? All the solar panels on the roof are for the light and the mini robots. That robot is harvesting the torch flowers, while the small ones gather the potted flowers and put them on that wagon. In a magnetic railway that crosses the entire farmland up to the lake uh, that I still have to build, okay. Ah, I hope I can have a real automatic torch flower farm, but if Mohan added the crafter, we can hope for a block placer and a block breaker one day. Yeah, maybe with a nicer texture. A few years ago, a US company was developing jammed air balloons to produce renewable energy. I decided to build a couple of these hot air balloons in the sky above the farmland. They fit perfectly the theme and I think they will look amazing. The lower part is in the shade, so I'm using light grey concrete and green wool instead of the white concrete and lime wool on the side exposed to the sun. The experience of building the wind turbine wasn't tragic, so I quickly added another balloon with a slightly different palette. I want to see the balloons from the sky. Ooh, I like them. They're exactly how I planned. 
The flying wind turbines are a symbol of the solar punk style. They're amazing, don't you think? Let's move to the south side with another building. The entrance is made of glass with a blue gradient ending with a small dome. I also eat water under a pillar so I could plant sugarcane along with other greenery. Greenhouses are fun, but we need a change of style, so let's build a colorful warehouse like those reporter structures you may see in many dockside areas. This warehouse is gonna host a very useful farm. For now, it's just a bunch of concrete boxes, but it will get better, I promise. I showed you in a previous video about farming dice, my favorite tall flower farm. I struggled a bit, but I managed to squeeze five of them with a slightly different design, but the same idea. Go mill the flowers, get more. Let me finish the aquarium before showing you the farm. You will live here for now. I know it looks tiny, but pal, it's like eight meters long, far bigger than many fish tanks. Now um, I might use some more lilac, so bone me here, click the lever and since the mud is not a full block, the flower will end up in a line of hoppers. Then we'll throw them, follow me, in the underground system, the pipes that run under the farmland and bring stuff to the storage. The warehouse roof is too flat, so I'm gonna add an attic filled with more bone meal powered farms. The prismarine decoration should be resemble a wave. Then I add the three tiny trees to decorate the roof. The cherry tree is just a smaller version of the Minecraft one, but with more fluffy foliage. Then a tiny azalea and a custom mangrove with the roots going down to the ground level. We build a twisted vines farm on the other side of the farmland. Let's check it out. Okay, I want to use some of these vines for the warehouse since it's, well, twisted. I managed to put three more tiny farms for fur, blue lichen and roots. It might seem pointless, but I use a lot of them and these farms are pretty useful. There's a fern in that pot, ready to be used. I'm placing it here, the observer sees it and sends a signal to the dispenser, so if we shear it, we have two ferns. The glow lichen is similar, the redstone block acts as a switch on off, so the fern will trigger only when needed. You have to cut. The glue light is on the observer and the dispenser will bone meal the lower one. This is even more simple, you just have to harvest the roots. Yeah, there's a door echo, but I can live with that. Well, you know the dirt. The observer tricks the dispensers that bone meals the rooted dirt. And this is how you get more hanging roots. Now, if you get back to the ground floor, all the things we just farm can go in the usual bin and they will end up sorted in the storage. We are missing something here, let me show you what I mean. I immediately managed to craft a zero banner. Just fill the four sides in white, then add a border of the same color of the banner to make it nicer. It took me a few tries to get number one, but it's very simple. This is already a one, but with an indented border it will look smoother and then the border. Well, this is warehouse 10. Let's work with the other boxes. I made some copies in different colors and now we need a red 9 and a yellow 8. I must admit, I struggled with number 9. Each of my attempts required too many steps and it was therefore impossible in survival. So I googled it and find this design. I put the link in the description. Number 8 is pretty straightforward. It's like a zero but with a line at the center. Like this. And then the border, like the others. Well, it looks pretty good, I love it! You know what it's missing in a warehouse filled with bone meal powered farms? Yes, a bone meal farm! We are gonna build a sugarcane based bone meal farm right beside the warehouse, with output in this pot, right from a composter. It's a basic piston observer farm with water under the birch slab to grow the sugarcane and a glass wall to see what is happening inside. This farm has a very peculiar shape, so long and thin, and so I thought of turning it into a linear park, which is perfect for this team. All abandoned railways, like the Newark High Line or the Promenade Plantain in Paris, 
have been transformed into awesome parks that are, well, way longer than wide, hence the name. The building should recall the industrial era, so I'm starting with two brick arches. I'm not overdoing it, because the main feature of this park is the abandoned railway. I'm just putting some grass, flowers with colors that matches the brick palette and three small spruce trees. This is also the only place in the far one where we'll see lanterns. They look too old for the solar punk style, but are perfect for this industrial era railway. Finally, I built an old-fashioned tractor. But don't worry, it has solar panels, it doesn't run on petrol. Oh, it's so cute! Look, I can even enter in it! I love it so much that I built another one in a different color, ending a trailer with hay bales and a very important license plate. If you watch so far, you might subscribe so you won't miss my next videos and don't forget to like! It's time to fill the large flower and crop field in the center of the farmland. I don't think I'll ever harvest these crops, it's just a decorative feature where I mix wet beetroots and potatoes to colorful flowers. You might think that the fields are too clean and boring, but there's a reason why they're missing some landscaping. These fields are looked after by robots, which require large and precise spaces to operate. Now I'm building the energy station for the robots with a mix of pseudoscience blocks. And then there's a very high gizmo, I guess it's some sort of antenna. I really like how it was coming out, so I continue to go higher and higher. Yep. That antenna is probably too high and complicated, but it fits very well. I added a control panel banner on this side, like the one in the water wheel. There's more going on here, like um, this odd system of pipes extracting lime and orange jelly from the ground. I wish we had more blocks like slime and honey, but in different colors, they create some cool effects. Right beside the fields, there are three pallets filled with potted plants ready to be picked up. So the fields are nice but also very busy. Now let's focus on the lakeside. Wait, what lakeside am I talking about? Let me fill this hole with water and we will have the lake. I'm lighting up the area with sea pickles adding kelp and bone milling. Like all things around here, the lake is a mixture of natural and sci-fi features. The magnetic railway continues through the lake to nowhere for now and there's an old style lock at the end of the lake. I added a couple of custom oaks and a custom mangrove. The lake still seemed empty, so I asked myself what natural item is missing from the farmland. I realized that I don't have nether warts, and I decided to build a spiral field of soil sand. At the start of this project, I saved the llama from a low paid job, dressed him up in a nice carpet and let him free to roam the farmland. I was working on the last details in the lake when I suddenly... <coughs> Buddy? Can he be... How did you end up down there? I'm coming from you! Um, I don't know why I had two leads with me. Come with me, buddy. Maybe we will drown, but if anything, we will drown together. Is it working? Are you following me? Yeah. Oh, we did it, safe and sound. Don't do this to me ever again. <coughs> the llama is shot and there's a bit of separation anxiety, but I'm confident he'll get through it. I know, I said enough greenhouses, but this one is very special. I plan all the farmland to be a mega base, so we need an enchanting room. This greenhouse, therefore, is more fantasy than futuristic. The ground floor has opaque walls because Strange, magical things happen inside, and we live in a world of signs and progress that wouldn't understand. I know, it's a big scary world, but you should go. Yes, find your way, make me proud. Ah, oh, they grow up so fast. The ground floor, with the enchanting setup, is still a greenhouse. Well, more a mushroom chamber with exotic plants from the nether. I packed 15 libraries, and it can go up to 30 levels. 
Up here we have a more traditional greenhouse with leaves, bushes and tall flowers and also nether vines, why not? This section is open because I want to connect the enchanting building with the warehouse rooftop somehow. We could probably build... Oh, are you kidding me? I'm here! I jumped down from another side, but I'm here now, calm down! To connect the enchanting greenhouse to the warehouse, I'm building a, well, sort of a cableway, but it's actually a walkway from one structure to the other. It's a bit weird, but it puts the whole area together. Since I had an anxious llama to feed, I saw a wet field. A mechanical harvester is at work, leaving only empty fields behind it. To fill the corner, I added another warehouse, similar to the bigger one. The warehouse looks a bit forsaken, since it's the older one, it's probably also the first. It deserves a number. There it is. One day I probably tear down this wall and continue to expand further, but for now we need to fill this area to call it a day. In the Millennium Plaza in Bristol there's a modern sculpture called the Energy Tree, a nano structure with solar panels where people can recharge their phones. I created my little artwork here with the same idea, to light the area in a sustainable way. I wanted to fill the horizon with a couple of high structures, so I'm building two twin silos, slightly different palette. Look, I'm using chisel bookshelves for windows by putting them one block behind the wall. They look awesome! I already have two good bamboo farms in my world, so I didn't need one here on the farm lab. Anyway, I'm building a small greenhouse for bamboo. It won't be automatic, but if you ever need a bunch of bamboo, you can always come here and harvest it. We have a large glass house for the torch flower, but we can forget about the pitcher pot. To fill the wall, I'm also adding a high billboard. Why? Don't you see it? The blue concrete is the lake, the yellow the sun and the orange the sunset sky. This one is easier, come on, it's a red tulip! The lock is so simple yet so amazing. I'm done for now, but one day I will create a lower lake right here and fill the area with all the ideas I couldn't fit in the current farmland. I added more custom trees, even these colorful red and orange ones. And now it's time to add even more color with some banners. For the headquarters of the Solar Corp, a banner with the logo. I'm a bit addicted to banners. Check my previous video with my designs and stay tuned because there's more coming. Did you know that you can put banner in top of each other? It's an amazing feature to create bigger patterns. Now we can invite villagers to live here. I already placed a railway for them. You might have noticed the large hole in that mountain. It leads to the village transformation of a previous video, the reconstruction of the ground of the little town. Yes, the Bill Murray iconic movie. Building it was lots of fun. But for now, let's free a couple of villagers from the time loop. Sir, you don't know, but you're living the same day again and again. Here you are, all safe and sound. Who wants to upgrade to master level? Golden carrots. That's the right diet. It's been an amazing project and I learned a lot. Some of these projects are just fiction, but many ideas are real and possible and I enjoy to put them all together. In the Solar Corp farmland, I packed many farms that I will use to decorate and fuel all my next projects, so stay tuned. Thank you all for watching. See you soon. If you want to know how I do it, if you search for a new cool idea, here she is, here she is. Me my MC, me my MC, the best place to be. Building brick by brick with a little chic mountain high or never deep. All you villagers and pillagers, she's gonna show the craft to the secrets of Minecraft. Assemble and creating and waiting for the new update. Don't be a creeper if you like what you see. Raise your hands high and thumbs up for me, my MC.